Within Dead Island 2, you can of course pick between six different playable characters. Now interestingly, of course, all of these six playable characters are different, they're all different people, but there's more to it than that, they all have completely different stats and traits. And in this video, we'll be going over the six playable characters, going over the descriptions about them, and their unique perks, along with their stats. We'll look at all six of them, going into detail about all of them, and then we'll look at the best characters for different scenarios, depending on how you want to play the game. And then we will look at an overall best character, the most overpowered character within Dead Island 2 that you can play as right at the start of the game. So let's waste no more time and let's get into the best characters within Dead Island 2. So to start things off, we're going to look at Amy. Now Amy is somewhat of a glass cannon with low toughness and health, but a good amount of agility and damage output. Her playstyle is all about dashing in to deal damage, dashing out to avoid getting hit, then throwing weapons at a distance. And her statistics are as follows. She has a toughness of 1, a stamina of of 3, a health recovery of 3, a critical damage of 4, an agility of 5, a peak health of 2, and a resilience of 3. So as you can see there, their toughness really isn't impressive, but then again, it goes with their description of being a character that really just goes in and then goes out. They deal a bit of damage, and then they go away and they avoid getting hit, and then they use weapons at a distance as well to also avoid getting hit. So they do have a decent stamina of 3 to be able to utilize all of that, and they also have a very high critical damage and a very high agility, of course, to be able to maneuver in and out of combat and yeah that critical damage will really come into play since you're not going to be able to hit zombies as frequently so obviously you need the high damage to be able to make up for that so amy's unique perks are as follows Relief Pitcher, you get a little bit of stamina back when you throw a weapon at an enemy, which helps you stay agile and out of the way. Then there is the second perk, which is Divide and Conquer. When you're attacking a zombie by itself, you get a small damage boost, which lets you take out lone zombies quickly before alerting the horde. So there we go, that's everything we know about Amy, that's all of her statistics and a description for her, and her unique perks. So let's move on to one of the more common characters that people tend to choose, and that is Jacob. And the reason for this is because Jacob is a jack of all trades, being the most well-rounded of the characters on offer. So whilst he does get knocked down very easily, his huge health stat makes up for this and makes it much less terrifying. So his statistics are as follows. He has a toughness of 3, a stamina of 4, a health recovery of 2, a critical damage of 3, an agility of 3, a peak health of 5, and a resilience of 1. So yeah, you can really see with that resilience it is really weak, which allows him to get knocked down very easily. But then again, he has a very high stamina, which allows for him to be able to get back up a lot of times. And he also has an insane amount of health which allows him to get knocked down and not take too much damage to the point where it's going to really affect you so yeah a peak health of five which is the maximum really impressive there and then of course he's got a decent stamina and pretty much everything is a decent stat other than really the health recovery and the resilience but the health recovery shouldn't be too much of an issue with it being such a high health anyway and yeah the resilience really is where there's the only real con but either way let's get into his unique perks so there is feral where you'll get a stackable damage boost when attacking zombies in quick succession and and given most of the combat is spamming the attack button, this is going to be very, very powerful. Then there is critical gains. So while your stamina is low, critical hits give you a big boost to critical damage and top up your stamina a little bit too. So pretty cool there as well. So let's move on to the third playable protagonist within Dead Island 2, and that is Bruno. So Bruno is a master of stealth who's not built for being in the thick of it. You'll need to keep on your toes if you want to play as him, but his damage output really is unmatched. So his stats are as as follows a toughness of two a stamina of three a health recovery also of three a critical damage of five an agility of four a peak health of one and a resilience of three so as you can see there their toughness is really really poor his peak health is also really really poor so the idea of stealth you can really see shines there in a very high agility of four and then a very high critical damage of five so as you can see yeah bruno is all about going in there quickly getting a few hits in which will deal a a lot of damage and then quickly getting out of the area to avoid getting hit since of course a peak health of one is very very poor so yeah really all about stealth and making sure you are not seen by those zombies to keep things easy and keep things tidy so the unique perks for bruno are as follows backstab you'll get a big damage boost when attacking a zombie from behind in addition to the critical damage doled out from doing so then there is rapid reprisal your agility and heavy attacks get boosted when you block or dodge so of course you do have to pick between blocking or dodging in the game since you can't have both of them equipped at the same time. And given Bruno's whole deal is attacking from behind, a quick dodge behind an enemy will deal a massive amount of damage. So let's move on to the fourth playable protagonist within Dead Island 2. 
and that is Carla. So Carla can take an absolute beating before getting knocked down, making her a force to be reckoned with in boss fights. She excels at fighting large groups of zombies at once. Her statistics are as follows, a toughness of 4, a stamina of 3, a health recovery also of 3, a critical damage of 1, an agility of 2, a peak health of 3, and a resilience of 5. So as you can see, Carla really is just a tank. She is able to take loads and loads of damage, but she can't deal much damage to be honest. So yeah, obviously if you feel like you're going to be the type of person that maybe struggles a bit with combat you're not going to be very quick at it and you feel like you're going to take a lot of hit from zombies then obviously it is going to be worth maybe considering Carla since obviously yeah she really doesn't do much in terms of the damage department but she does do a lot in terms of taking the damage so yeah pretty cool stuff there and her unique perks are as follows there is mosh pit when fighting a group of enemies you get a small damage boost to your melee attacks then there is big deep when you are very low on health you get a big boost to toughness making it harder for you to die at critical moments so so yeah, pretty cool stuff there. Basically, Carla is just a tank. So let's move on to the fifth playable protagonist, which is Danny. To put it simply, Danny is all about staying alive and fighting for as long as possible. She's got a decent amount of health, a bucket load of stamina, and skills that really do actually encourage playing aggressively. So her statistics are as follows. A toughness of 3, a stamina of 5, a health recovery of 1, a critical damage of 3, an agility of 3, a peak health of 4, and a resilience of 2. So as you can see, yeah, she's all about fighting. She's not that great when it comes to staying alive and taking damage but she can deal damage she deals a fair amount of damage with critical damage of three she's fairly agile pretty average though and then obviously a very high stamina so it's able to stay in combat for a very very long time without really having to worry about getting tired or anything like that and also has a decent peak health of four so it can take a decent amount of damage as well whilst also dealing a decent amount too so yeah definitely not about keeping things stealthy but all about going in there and killing as many zombies as possible but the unique perks there are thunderstruck so charging up for a heavy attack causes a force explosion briefly stopping surrounding zombies in their tracks then there is bloodlust you gain a little bit of health back when killing multiple zombies in short succession which is good because danny's health recovery is of course very slow with it literally just being one so let's move on to the sixth and final playable protagonist within dead island 2 and that is ryan now ryan is a bit like carla in the fact that he is a tank of a character with lots of health defensive ability and perks that let him restore health health and deal more damage after dodging and blocking. So his statistics are as follows. A toughness of 5, a stamina of 3, a health recovery also of 3, a critical damage of 2, an agility of 1, a peak health of 3 and a resilience of 4. So as you can see, Rhea really is a tank. A very low critical damage and agility of 2 and 1, but then they also have a decent amount of peak health, but their resilience and toughness is really where they shine. They're able to deal with lots of things that are thrown their way. So Ryan definitely is very similar to Carla to be honest, so you can really pick between the two there there's not loads of differences but let's look at ryan's unique perks so there is retaliation this skill increases your force after a well-timed dodge or block which makes you more likely to knock down zombies when attacking then there is seesaw in perfect tandem with retaliation this skill covers a little bit of health every time you knock down a zombie so there you go those are the details and everything you need to know about the six playable protagonists within dead island 2 so now let's move on to the best characters to pick for different scenarios depending on the how you want to play the game. So first of all, let's talk about the best character for beginners. This is your first playthrough of the game. You're very new to the Dead Island series. You don't really know what you're getting into. But yeah, in this case, the best character is by far Jacob. The reason for this is that Jacob does just about everything at least a little bit well. His feral damage boost is a godsend as he'll always be dishing out big damage after just a few hits. While his high health means you can stay in the action a little longer than some of the other characters. So now let's talk about the best character for dealing damage. When you really, really want to be stuck in that combat, dealing as much damage as you possibly can and in this scenario bruno is definitely the best option bruno is a high risk high reward character but he's deeply satisfying to play as once you really get the gameplay loop down so this does mean that you really do need to understand the combat mechanics of dead island 2 before playing as bruno his skills mean that he'll be dealing the most damage of just about any character in the game and if you do a little bit of sneaking you'll usually be able to get a bit of a leg up at the start of most combat encounters as well so pretty cool stuff there so now let's talk about the best character 
of staying alive. In this scenario, I would say this is when you understand that you aren't very strong when it comes to combat within the Dead Island games. You struggle with it and you tend to take quite a lot of damage and you really can't move that fast in the game since yeah, you struggle with the combat. So in this scenario, Carla is your best of bets. She's got fantastic defensive stats and her damage output is boosted while fighting large groups of enemies, which is almost always. So whilst not being the most powerful character in the game, she does deal a decent enough amount of damage to make combat encounters manageable. Carla is easily the best option when it comes to staying alive. So there you go. Those were the best characters for beginners, for dealing damage, and for staying alive. So now let's talk about the best character overall within Dead Island 2. The most overpowered character, and that is easily Jacob, which is also the best character for beginners. This is because Jacob is just perfect in every single scenario. The only place he lacks in is in resilience, but everything else is decent, with the health recovery of 2 being the second lowest, but everything else is at least a 3, with the toughness being a 3, the stamina being a 4, and the critical damage and the agility also being 3, with a insanely good peak health of 5. This is a great character. Jacob is definitely going to offer everything he possibly can, and if you're looking for just the best midpoint between, you know, the best stats and also being able to enjoy the game at a sort of neutral standpoint, then Jacob is definitely the best option. So, yeah, the most overpowered character within Dead Island 2 is definitely Jacob. And there we go. That does just about wrap up things here. That's absolutely everything you need to know about these six playable protagonists within Dead Island 2. And then we looked at the best characters for different scenarios, depending on how you want to play the game, and the best character overall. And yeah, that does just about wrap up things here. Now, on screen now, you're seeing a link to a video where I did a complete beginner's guide to Dead Island 2. And if you're interested in watching that, then just hit the link on the screen and you can go ahead and join me over there.